Hello and welcome back to the Deco Minimalist. My name is Carrie, and I create content here on YouTube all about vintage style, 1930s fashion, and glamour on a budget. And today I thought I would cover something that I have not yet touched on on the channel, and that is uh, vintage style makeup, and sp specifically make a makeup style that's sort of reminiscent of the 1930s. And I think that makeup, especially lipstick, is one of those things um, similar to waving one's hair that immediately sort of gives a someone a vintage or a retro kind of look no matter like what your hairstyle or what you know or, or the outfit that you're wearing so that's why one of the reasons why I feel it's important to touch on in this channel I'm not typically like a makeup person I tend to just have like products that I buy it once and I just use over and over because I can't be bothered to do a whole lot of research on like the thousand million you know options that are out there in the market but every once in a while every like maybe like once or twice a year I get curious and I go exploring um, for like different options particularly when it comes to things like foundation or like a foundation type product where it's going to be covering a lot of your face and uh, today I'm I'm going to be showcasing um, products that I've purchased recently. Some of them are going to be um, Besame Cosmetics, and some of them are going to be from um, Jones Road, which is, I believe, a brand started by Bobbi Brown. Um, I love Bobbi. I think she's really cool, and um, just her approach to makeup and like focusing on natural beauty, all that stuff really resonates with me. So um, I was very curious to try some products by this new brand that she has and uh, their Instagram ad, ad targeting finally got to me. So I'll be experimenting with some of those as well. And for this video, I'm going to be focusing on three different looks. And all three of these looks are sort of generally inspired by the 1930s or what I consider to be like a 1930s style of makeup. Um, but I'm, they're not going to be historically accurate or using, you know, his period methods or like recipes, that kind of thing. That's not really something that I'm necessarily into. I know there are people on YouTube who do sort of experimenting with period authentic looks and like making one's own cosmetics and things like that. So I will have a little playlist of 1930s um, inspired makeup that I'll link up here and down below. I will also say that I don't for me, I don't have um, a lot of the features that were considered to be desirable for women in the 1930s. So for instance, like the heart-shaped face was, in my understanding, sort of one of the desired features. Think of someone, you know, like Merle Loy, this sort of beautiful heart-shaped face and facial structure, um, or, you know, thin arched eyebrows like Jean Harlow or Marlena Dietrich, you know. Um, I don't have those those qualities. Um, I have a very long face and I have obviously a very thick dark brows um, and I'm totally fine with that. I, I'm not going to be out here you know altering or plucking my brows. I did that in high school in the mid 2000s and trust me it was not a cute look so I'm just going to be again I'm not going to be trying to replicate the thin brows or anything like that. It's just going to be me applying products that I think of as sort of being reminiscent of the 1930s um, on my face as it is and not doing any kind of real altering or contouring or anything like that. And so this first look, as I said, is going to be really sort of a classic 1930s inspired makeup. And the other two looks in this series are going to be very much inspired by the makeup that Keira Knightley wears in um, Atonement, um, particularly like in that first part of the movie that's that's set in 1935. I really love the the look that they gave her. Obviously, they weren't using like period materials or anything like that, but the look that they gave her is very sort of natural um, and healthy, you know, very, very subtle. And I think, you know, that look, the look that she wears in the early part of the movie, um, that also sort of points to a reality um, that, you know, you know, not every 20 person in their 20s, woman in their 20s in the 1930s was necessarily wearing like red lipstick um, and like doing, you know, doing the most with their makeup or sort of emulating stars directly. Um, I think in my understanding, particularly in the UK, there was also like a, 
a very clear sort of class division with that, that, you know, women in the like upper classes were sort of, didn't tend to wear like bright red lipstick and things like that as much. Um, and you see that too in other period movies like Downton Abbey in, in, in the 20s and things like that, or, or the um, Hercule Poirot, you know, um, shows and things like that, like not every woman was sort of emulating Jean Harlow and Marlena Dietrich and things like that in terms of what she was putting on her face. And I think, you know, that is something that we can forget if we just look at, you know, images of like Hollywood starlets, but like it still maybe wasn't always that common for every single person to be wearing, you know, obvious makeup, especially something like red lipstick. That said, I do love a good lipstick. I first started, um, I didn't wear lipstick at all really until my senior year of college, which is when I first started experimenting with vintage style and like vintage hairstyling, things like that. And I remember I would sort of, because it would always sort of, red lipstick, and I think this is the case for a lot of people, um, It's they find it very intimidating. And I would sort of, you know, go to Walgreens and like get different kinds of lipstick and sort of covertly experiment with them in my dorm room. And then if a friend like knocked on the door, I would like be wiping it off, you know. Um, but I think wearing red lipstick for me, like when I was started to get comfortable with it and like applying it, things like that, the lipstick and learning to wave my hair. Um, both of those, I remember like experimenting with these things and looking at myself in the mirror and being like, oh, like this is how I feel I'm supposed to look, you know, not in like a prescriptive way, but this is how I feel I should be. It, it, this feels really authentic in terms of how I want to present myself in the world. And at the time, my go-to lipstick was uh, from Besame Cosmetics. It was, I think, the Merlot shade, which they don't carry any longer. But that said, I do love uh, Besame Cosmetics, their story, the the way that um, Gabrielle, um, the founder, she's so intent and intentional with the historical, the, really exploring the history um, behind the products that they're recreating. I just find it all so cool. And, you know, I started wearing Besame lipstick around this time in 2014, and I still, it's still like my go-to brand. You know, if I have like a choice, if I have a little extra money to spend on a lipstick, I will always choose Besame over everything else. And for this video, I'm gonna be um, showcasing some new products that I bought from Besame. I don't have any um, professional affiliations with them. That said, I have applied to be an affiliate, so hopefully that comes about. I would love to work with them in that capacity, but at this time, when I'm filming this and uploading it, um, there is no affiliate, you know, relationship between me and Besame. So I just want it to be very transparent. Obviously, if that changes down the line, I will update links and make sure that you know that those are affiliate links, all of that good stuff. So what I'm going to be doing is, uh, discuss, I think first I'm going to discuss the Besame haul, and then I will move on to um, showing you the three looks that I've come up with, and uh, we can go forward from there. All right, let's get to it.
Right, and so here I am um, applying the Bobbi Brown Weightless uh, Foundation. I tend to, usually I tend to just apply this foundation with my hands just because it feels more tactile and I feel like I have more control over the application and stuff. Also, I hate cleaning my brushes, my makeup brushes, so this, it's just easier this way. And then we are going in with the NYX concealer. Which I obviously do under the eye and then on top of the eyelid, going from the eyelid to the just under the eyebrow. And then I'll apply it usually like around my nose and any other and chin and any other place that I feel like needs a bit more uh, coverage. And it, this particular color actually is a good match with the Bobbi Brown foundation, so that's good. And now I'm going in with the Besame Powder Compact, which I've been using quite a lot actually since I got it and I really like. Right here I'm using the powder puff that it came in, but I have since just used it with um, a retractable powder brush just for ease of use and also partially for hygienic reasons because at least in my past experience the powder puffs are hard to clean and all of that. So. And then I feel like, you know, I'd be opening up the compact and they would fall out and things. So I just find the powder brush easier to use. Here we're going in with one of my favorite makeup products. This is the um, Cream Eyeshadow by Charlotte Tilbury. This is in Champagne. And it also creates one of those qualities that I think of as being like very 1930s, which is a very sort of glossy eyelid. I believe they would have had cream eyeshadows too in the 1930s. And I forgot to film the uh, putting on the actual lipstick, of course, but um, yeah, I would apply lip pencil and lipstick after this. Applying the um, Wet the Foundation by Jones Road. And then here I'm using a foundation brush just because it has this kind of almost like a watery consistency when it's in the pot and I thought, a makeup brush would just make the application a little less messy and easier. And here I'm just doing it in thin layers, just like Lisa Eldritch uh, taught us. <laughs> and then here is the um, pencil, the face pencil. I looked at this on the website. It seems to be just kind of for touch-ups and kind of like a concealer, so that's how I'm using it here. It's not as, you know, thick, so to speak, as the NYX concealer, obviously. And then I put some on the back of my hand and then using it again to cover just slightly the tops of the eyelids. And then again, going over it with powder, this time with the powder brush. It's been a while since I've used a powder compact and I just love the, the vintage kind of feeling and my like practice that it that it gives. And again, here's the Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow. I used to get I used to have this in another more sort of brown, like tawny color, but I since only only use the uh, the cream, the uh, the champagne color because I don't know. I guess I'm more of a minimalist when it comes to makeup, so. So with the blush application, I'm just thinking of the, um, again, like the Keira Knightley as the, the inspiration image, and you can see sort of, it's very, very subtle in the photos, and if you watch the movie, like just this very subtle sort of blush on the cheeks, like a little bit maybe here towards the cheekbone and then back, which if I remember correctly was something in the 30s, essentially using blush as like a contour, um, I believe that's how they would have used it um, as opposed to like in the 20s where it was more sort of center of the face 
sort of going back. And I'm sure this, you know, changed throughout the decade as different trends and things like that came in and out. But yeah, I think when I'm trying to recreate that Kira Knightley kind of look, um, blush is definitely, I think, a big factor in that because uh, you want the sort of flushed, healthy, and it's very subtle, especially because she's not wearing any real lip product um, or like noticeable lip product. I think it really sort of makes the blush a little more center stage. That said, I am going to be using here the Besame um, lip pencil just to sort of bring some color and uh, dimension to my lips. And honestly, with a look like this, I mean, this is like a chunky lip pencil. Um, and if you, if lipstick still kind of intimidates you, you can just get this lip pencil and use it basically in place of a lipstick. I think, you know, this would be a very nice, this is a very nice look um, because we're going for something a little more understated. Um, I'm going to just sort of mat, blot it down with a piece of uh, paper or tissue paper. Yeah, so here we have the second look. I quite like it. It feels very nice, very natural. Um, again, the foundation doesn't feel heavy. And yeah, this would just be a nice, almost like a nice um, everyday look. The reason why I, um, uh, the reason why I got these other two foundation products, or like face products, is that I wanted an alternative to the Bobbi Brown foundation, which is the foundation that I've been wearing in almost every video up till this point. Um, it just, it's great, but it's like, it feels very made up, you know, and sometimes, and I would either, it was like my only option if I wanted a, f a foundation product, so I could either go full face or nothing, and I think this is a nice kind of in-between uh, product to still give some coverage, but not feel so dense and like doing the most kind of thing, you know? Um, so yeah, I think so far. So far, uh, this is a good choice. So now I will go on to show you the um, the other product that I got. Oh my God, what's up? The other product that I got from uh, Jones Road, which is the uh, Miracle Bomb. And I'm very curious to see what that looks like, but first I need to take off all the work that I just did and uh, we will start again uh, from scratch. All right, see you in a second. For some reason, I'm a little trepidatious about this. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe putting on moisturizer after taking off the other makeup was a bad idea. It feels kind of like you're applying like a face oil or like it has like the consistency of like a Vaseline, like a hard Vaseline. Well, I mean Vaseline, you know, but I don't, this is so interesting, huh. Yeah, you can see it's not really, it's adding more just like a nice kind of gloss, which is fine. Um, but it's not really doing any like color correcting or anything like that. Let me go on the light here so you can see. Interesting. Yeah, I don't entirely know what to say about this yet. Um, I think for like a makeup product, I would definitely use the What The Foundation, but this I might use. Um, this may come in handy at some point. I think definitely if you have a dry skin, this would be nice. This, it's not totally canceling out like any kind of spots or redness in my face, so I think I would be a little disinclined to wear any kind of like red lip product. But it was definitely interesting, that's for sure. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video to be interesting, fun. You know, this is sort of a new way of um, doing content for me, so if you'd like to see more 
of this type of content, let me know. I don't anticipate, honestly, you know, to be making a whole lot of a whole lot more uh, vintage style makeup um, because I've already, you know, I've shown you all of my cards <laughs> in this video pretty much. Again, I tend to be someone who finds what they like in terms of makeup and just sticks with it for as long as possible. But if you want to see more um, historically accurate makeup kind of content, let me know. I'd be happy to do that. And uh, yeah, feel free to like and subscribe. And I will see you next Monday with another video. I hope you have a lovely rest of the week. All right. Bye.